Hey, welcome to the Construction Zone Online. I'm Pastor Marcus. I'm here by myself on stage today. Um, we are in the middle of the Big Bug World theme. Every week we're taking a different bug and we're finding out what it can teach us about following Jesus. Well, a few weeks ago, we had a vote from you guys to say, what's your favorite bug? Who do you want to appear on the Big Bug Show? And we had a bunch of votes and every one of you voted for a different bug. So we ended up just drawing one name from the hat. And it was Nolan, one of our viewers from America, and he chose the rhinoceros beetle. Well, we've created a whole lesson around the rhinoceros beetle. Thank you, Nolan. Do you know what a rhinoceros beetle even looks like? Well, if you've seen the movie Bugs Life, you would have seen this guy. And he's a cartoon version of a, of a rhinoceros beetle, but it actually looks like this. Right? It's a pretty big creature, isn't it? Would you hold one in your hand? You know, it looks like it could pinch you with those hooks on his, on his head, but uh, a rhinoceros beetle is actually harmless to people. It helps protect them to look like that. You know, sometimes we make judgments about people when we see them. Uh, you might look at somebody and not like the way they look or the clothes they wear, their voice might change the way you treat them, but you don't really know their hearts. And we're going to be talking today with the help of the rhinoceros beetle. We'll be, we're going to be talking about judging my appearances. I could give you a list of people I know who the first time I met them, I thought they would be like this, but as I got to know them and got to know their hearts, I found that they were completely different. We're going to talk about that today, but first let's watch an episode of Milo's Big Bug Show. And this is my show, Milo's Big Bug Show. This is a show where we talk to bugs. Today, we're going to meet a rhinoceros beetle. So let's meet him right now. Hello, Milo. It's your rhinoceros beetle. Yikes, that is huge. Security, we have an emergency. Why would you say that? Oh, he's so big. And that horn, it's like a tank with legs instead of treads. <laughs> rhinoceros beetles are quite large, but not the largest in the world. I, I bet it's got some really sharp teeth, doesn't it? No, it doesn't bite and a horrible stinger that'll go right through my hand to the other side. It's completely <laughs> harmless, Milo. In fact, many children in Japan keep them as pets. Wait, so you're nice and, and you speak Japanese? Okay, I didn't say that. Do you know Chef Morimoto? Konnichiwa, karaoke, sushi, Godzilla, haiku. Oops, that's all the Japanese I know. Good, because that was dreadful. So if he's not a mean killing machine, why, why does he look like that? He uses the horns to drive away other rhinoceros beetles when he's trying to get a mate. So he uses it to impress girls. Hey, I do the same thing. Check out these biceps, ladies. Something like that, in, in Milo terms. Well, I completely misjudged you, Mr. Rhinoceros Beetle. His name is Whiskers. See, everyone? You can't judge a person by outward appearance or a bug either. The lesson I want you to learn is that it doesn't matter what you look like. You could be tall or short, or fat or thin, or you can be black or yellow or white. It doesn't matter. What matters is the size of your heart and the strength of your character. Brilliant, Marla. Wasabi. What? Oh, another Japanese word I just remembered. That's true, everybody. Have a great day. Tsunami. Karate. Nunchucks. Ninja Turtle. <laughs> you will not write in the head. Jungle Dini. And I'm Jungle Winnie. And we are the Bacadas! Today we are looking for the rhinoceros beetle. Rhinoceros beetle is big and has a horn like a rhinoceros. That's why it got its name. Lots of people are afraid of bugs. But not us, we love them. Yeah. <laughs> You have to be nice to them and stay away from insects that sting and bite. The rhino beetles won't sting or bite. Rhinoceros beetles, they don't like when people think that they are mean. So if you want to find them, you should do the rhino beetle dance. 
it goes like this. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with the righteous judgment. John 7, 24. Now finally, people judge you without knowing you. What if you not gonna be my friend just because you don't like my ears? Do not judge according to appearance. Judge righteous judgment. John 7, 24. It's pretty good, Winnie. Do you think our friends can do it at home? Do not judge, judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous, righteous judgment. judgment. John, John 7, 7 24. 24. It worked again! Oh, I want to take a picture of our friend. for your hair. Bye! A long time ago, Israel had a king named Saul. God picked Saul out to be king. Saul was tall and handsome and everyone loved him. By the time Saul was king for 40 years though, he had stopped following God's instructions. God decided it was time for a new king. Samuel the priest was very sad about Saul. One day God said, How long are you going to mourn for Saul? Fill your horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be the next king. Samuel obeyed God. He invited Jesse and his sons to come to a special sacrifice to the Lord. Samuel saw the oldest son, whose name was Eliab. He was tall and handsome. He must be the guy, Samuel thought to himself. God told Samuel, Don't look at his appearance or height, because I have rejected him. People only see what's visible. The Lord looks on the heart. Jesse brought his next son, Abinadab, and presented him to Samuel. No, God hasn't chosen him either, Samuel said. Then Jesse brought Shammah, his third son. No, Samuel said. One after another, Jesse presented seven of his sons to Samuel. Samuel said, wow, God hasn't chosen any of these. Are these all the sons you have? Well, Jesse said, there is still the youngest, but he's out taking care of the sheep. You better get him because we're not eating until he gets here, Samuel said. The threat of not eating must have been enough because Jesse called his youngest son over. When Samuel saw David, God told him, anoint him. He is the one I have chosen. Samuel took the horn of oil and poured it over David in front of all of his brothers. From that day forward, the Holy Spirit came powerfully on David. Hey, here's Pastor Marcus again. You know, rhino beetles are amazing animals. They're said to be the strongest animal on the planet. A rhino beetle can lift 850 times its own weight. That's like a person being able to lift four double-decker buses full of passengers. That's a strong bug, isn't it? They're big and they can be scary looking. Have you ever met someone who you were afraid of when you saw them and then later you found out they were really nice and sweet? You know, it's easy to judge people by their outward appearance. We can't see their heart like God sees them. Even when someone acts grouchy, we don't know why they're that way. They may have had a really bad day you can't even know about. God sees their heart you only see the outside. You know, for your safety, I'm talking about loving everyone, but that doesn't mean you should trust everyone. As kids, you should never go anywhere with a stranger. Uh, listen to Jesus and thought, obey your parents. But when it comes to meeting kids at school, no matter what they look like, be kind. No matter what skin color they have, what, what size they are, what clothes they wear, love them like Jesus loves them. You may have heard it said, the Bible says don't judge. The Bible says don't judge. That's maybe the most popular Bible quote from people who don't follow Jesus. Um, but that's really not the whole verse. The Bible doesn't say we should never judge, but that we should judge righteously. Bad judging 
is judging by appearance, by just what we see. Because we don't see what God sees, it's so very easy to do. And when I was a teenager, I would have realized that I had some friends that were leading me down the wrong path. I knew I had to stop following these people if I wanted to keep following Jesus, right? They were taking me one way when I knew I was supposed to go another way. I made a judgment to change my friendships. I believe that judgment saved my life. I never hated any of those people. I didn't stop hanging around with them because I thought I was better than them, but I knew that the path I was going on was the wrong path if I was going to follow Jesus. So maybe the easiest way to understanding righteous judgment is this. We judge actions, not people. So we know what's wrong because the Bible tells us, because God's word tells us, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, uh, no other gods before me. So we can say, hey, that's wrong, because the Bible says, because God says, God made the judgment. If he makes the judgment, we know it's righteous. But to people we show mercy, and we love them. We're not judgmental toward them because we know that we're sinners too, and we've sinned plenty. And so I hope that helps you understand judgment a little better. Maybe um, sometime you'll see a rhinoceros beetle, and you'll remember that even though he looks kind of big and scary, he's a pretty lovable guy. And people are pretty lovable too. So let's pray and um, stick around because after this, we have our next challenge. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us no matter what we look like. You love us no matter what we've done. Lord, and I pray, Father God, that those of us watching right now, we will have the same heart and the same eyes toward people that you do. Lord God, that, that no matter what they do, no matter how they are, we will be kind, we will be loving, and we will be like Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, this is Anna, the Construction Zone Online. But before we go, we have a special challenge for all of you. This last week we had a challenge. The challenge was to make a grasshopper and send it to us, right? Did you make a grasshopper too? So, we're gonna go through and we're gonna show you all the pictures that came in right now. Are you ready for this? First, this is Anson's drawing of the grasshopper. And here is Erica's drawing of the grasshopper. Here is Hannah's grasshopper with the eye problem. That's what she said, not, not, not what I said. And here is Laura's grasshopper. Here's Levi's grasshopper. And here is OG's grasshopper. And here is Sam's grasshopper, but he's too old to play, but I thought I'd put the drawing in there anyway. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. So that's it right there for all the names that we put in and that, that you sent in. Thank you guys for being a part of that. And we're gonna draw a name right now and see who will OG pull out today. You won the drawing today. You're gonna to get a Lego Mini figure. Yay! After, after the end of the theme, we'll send out. We'll do a special award show, and you'll get a Lego Mini figure then. And you got a joke? All right. I don't got a joke either. I forgot what it was. So next week's challenge will be: Can you make? What did the bees say when you answer the hive? When you're home. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, so the next week's challenge will be to make a rhinoceros beetle. So, can you make a rhinoceros beetle? No? You better practice. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye! Say bye, Olivia.